Our topic today is facial recognition technology. So, what is facial recognition technology? First, let's just imagine a situation that Michael Schofield just has a prison break. Now, the police were searching for him. The police was found a man in the video that looks similar to him. How can the police ensure that the man is exactly Michael Schofield? Now, the facial recognition technology is applied. So first today, we will talk about facial detection, which is the first step of facial recognition. Then we will focus on the core technology of facial recognition. And then the application and both advantage and challenges will be discussed. Okay, first, facial detection. Facial detection is used to determine the locations and the size of human faces in the arbitrary digital images. It is used to detect face and ignoring anything else, such as trees, buildings, and bodies. Uh, in the facial detection, basically three methods are in use. They are knowledge-based method, feature invariant approach, and template matching method. First, let's go to the knowledge-based method. Knowledge-based methods are based on human knowledge, uh, on typical human faces, geometry, and facial features arrangement. It takes advantage of the face symmetry and the natural top to bottom and left to right order in which the features appear in the human faces. In this method, hierarchical approaches are used at different solution levels. The first level is also the lowest level is to divide the face into mosaics by applying the rule that central part of the face has four cells in a basically uniform intensity. The second level is the local histogram equalization followed by edge detection, while the third level is search for the eye and the mouth features for validation. And the second approach is feature invariant approach. It is aimed to find a structural feature that exists even when the viewpoint or lightning conditions vary. And uh, uh, different structural features are being used, such as facial, lo facial local features, texture, shape, and skin color. Now, as we can see, the related positions of features are fixed. Just look at the picture. Uh, it is used as an example that the height of the eyes is lower half of the whole face. There are also technology that combine several features of, um, of several features of the face to improve the detection accuracy. And the third method is template matching method. It is based on the predefined templates. And so the first the first uh, step is the detection. It is uh, to detect a, a head outline, which is roughly ellip elliptical. And then it is used the it's tailored a specific feature of the searching method, which we want to detect. And then we use the template to compare with the search image. So if uh, the output will be the highest as place where the image structure matches the mask structure. So after talking about facial detection, let's move on to the facial recognition. Um, thank you, Mandy. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the facial recognition. Generally speaking, there are mainly two methods to <coughs> realize the facial recognition. They are direct correlation method and the second one is eigenface with principal component analysis, which is also known as PCA. Uh, let's first start from the first one, um, direct correlation method. Um, this method involves the direct comparison of pixel intensity values taken from facial images. Um, the first one is that we need to convert bitmap of images of, let's say, maybe A pixels into a vector of B elements which describe a point in a C dimensional image spaces. Um, and then, um, because we have two pictures here, so we, um, uh, uh, we measure the distance between the, the points uh, of the two uh, facial Im uh, image vectors 
we use P and Q to represent it. And then we calculate the difference between P and Q, and we get the answer D. And finally, we compare the D with a um, given threshold that is applied to, com um, to, to this system. So um, here, uh, if the D is smaller than or equal to the threshold, uh, um, then we, it means that um, the two pictures are similar enough to meet our requirement. But if D is larger than the threshold, then we'll reject it, means that um, the, these two pictures are not similar enough to meet our uh, requirement. This is the first method. And the second method is eigenphase, and is the fundamental rule is principal component analysis, PCA. It is a kind of mathematical tool to help us identify patterns in data and express the data in a way to highlight their similarities and differences. Mm, because uh, we, at the point, any point on a picture can be expressed in a two dimensions form, uh, x axis and one axis. So first, we need to form a data set, um, two dimensions. And the sec then we calculate the mean of the data and subtract the mean from, uh, from each number. So, and the results will be put into a covariance matrix. So in this covariance matrix, we need to calculate the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Here, um, eigenvectors and eigenvalues um, are used to uh, describe how the two data sets are related to each other along a straight line. And 